Good morning. Who would ever think that uh, keeping kids in school would increase graduation rates? <laughs> Dan's report validates the approach that we took in Clayton County uh, starting in 2003. I've been on the bench for 12 years, took the bench 1999. Um, most of our uh, referrals were coming from the school system. Uh, after school resource officers were placed in the schools in 1995, the year before we had 89 school referrals. By 2004, we had 1,400 each year. Our graduation rates had fallen to 58%. My role here is to talk about judicial leadership because this is a community problem. As I travel the country um, with the help of the Annie Casey Foundation and providing technical assistance on detention reform, particularly around this issue here, because when we open up the gates uh, to, uh, to make referrals to the juvenile court, we increase the risk of detention of kids. We know that now detention of kids uh, is a risk factor itself, uh, predicting reoffense rates. Uh, it is equal to gang membership and poor family function. That's pretty serious. We have to be careful when we make referrals and for what reason. But what happened in Clayton County is that um, as far as my role as a judge is concerned. If you think about it, these kids uh, who are touched by agencies and private providers generally do not intersect themselves together out in the community, but they do connect and intersect in the courtroom. As a judge, I know social services, I know mental health, I know the school system, I know the providers. They're there in my courtroom every day about kids. I'm the one who sees them. They intersect in my courtroom. The juvenile court is the intersection of juvenile justice, and if it's the intersection, that makes me the traffic cop. Therefore, I do have a role to play, not just on the bench in my due process role, but off the bench, and that role comes down to convening. Because when I travel the country, the last person to come to the table is the school system, generally speaking. Now, I'm not going to go into the reasons I think that's not the place for this right now, but. The fact of the matter is they're the hardest folks to get to the table. But they do come when a judge asks. And that's the important role of a judge. Now most of these judges are, are being asked by child advocacy groups, citizens in the community, meeting with judges. Judges, can you, can you take a look at this and bring people together, get the school system there? Let's just talk about it. So in Clayton County what we did is I brought everyone together, the chiefs of police, the school superintendent. I said let's talk about it. For nine months. We met aggressively. I brought in a facilitator, uh, someone neutral, and at the end of this, we had a written protocol. And when we implemented immediately, we saw a reduction in school referrals. 91% of our school referrals were low-level misdemeanor offenses, school fights, disorderly conduct, disrupting public school, uh, failure to follow the lawful command of a police officer, uh, SRO sees Johnny in the hallway, Johnny, come here, Johnny takes off. He's arrested. Wow, I'd run too. So the bottom line is, is that we saw 78% reduction in referrals. But at the same time, we realized that we need to help the school system. That was nice about the collaboration of bringing everyone together. What do we do with these kids? What do we do with the you know, chronically disruptive kids? And we realized that we need to connect the school system out with the community, so we created a system of care. And now is an, we took the Annie E. Casey model of alternatives to detention and applied it to alternatives to suspension and expulsion. And so we started developing other programs. And the system of care, now the school system can refer kids to the system of care where they are assessed, find the underlying reasons why they're disruptive, chronically disruptive, <coughs> determine their needs and match them with appropriate treatment programs in terms of family functional therapy, multi-systemic therapy, iffy services, things of that nature, maybe individual counseling. Uh, many of these parents may need some help as well. So the bottom line is, is that we then saw a decrease in our suspension rates in elementary and middle school. Uh, over this period of time, uh, then we have reached a point where the graduation rates have increased almost 21 percent. So now school safety is the last thing I want to say. There are critics out there that say, well, we need, the, uh, uh, we need to be tough on them for school safety. Really? Our school safety kept getting pretty poor uh, the more we locked up. The head of our SRO unit, Lieutenant Richards, 
I'll quote him. He says, schools are a microcosm of the community. If you want to know what's going on in the community, talk to the kids, but you got to get them to talk to you. The problem with our police is that they've spent most of their time in juvenile court at intake booking kids than they did on campus. The kids saw them as bad guys. Now they're on campus all the time engaging the kids. And by engaging the kids, they get to know the kids. Now the kids don't seem as bad guys. Now the kids are helping the police keep their own schools safe. Our serious weapon charges, for example, which is under state law zero tolerance, have to be charged, has fallen 70 percent. Guns, knives, straight edge razors, box cutter knives, 70 percent less of those coming in the schools. Why? Because the kids are telling the police now before it happens. Wow. I call that smart policing. You want to know who's tough on crime? I'm tough on crime. Our weapons are down. Now it's a community effort. It's sustainable. The community invested in it. This is not Steve Teske's. This is Clayton County. They invested. They own it. And we're doing better because of it. Thanks. We have time for probably two more questions. So why don't we take um, the back, and then I'm, um, I'm Veronica DeVore from the PBS NewsHour, um, and I had a question for both uh, Judge Teske and Mr. Bryce. Um, I'm wondering about um, the challenges you may have faced, uh, budgetary or otherwise, in implementing your um, discipline, discipline reform plans uh, in your respective districts, and what you feel might be preventing other districts from doing the same. There. There was no cost. That's what's nice about this. It's cheap. Um, I mean, it's about system reform. Uh, we just had to take what, what we already have and just, just do it differently. Um, resistance, um, it, was, it was minimal, but it was probably, um, there was probably a lot of uh, resistance behind my back. Um, I hear now stories about back then, they, they, comments like, you know, we thought Teske was crazy, um, you know, but that emphasizes the point I made in my presentation, and that is the role of the judge. Mm -hmm. Even though they thought I was crazy, they still came, because they had respect for my office. And, and but once we came to the table, uh, what was nice about this is that, um, we got to learn from each other. I mean, I, I, I learned things I didn't know before about what was going on on campus, what the police and teachers and administrators were dealing with. Um, they learned about my system and the fact that in my world, I have to distinguish between the kids who make me mad and the kids who scare me. Uh, that's the role of the juvenile court is to deal with the kids who, who scare me. Um, the kids who make me mad, you know, that needs to be somewhere else. And we then we had to figure out where that somewhere else is. And, and that's when we came up with the system of care. And, and, and let's, one thing I didn't mention too is that as a result of reducing these numbers, I mean, there's 1,400 that went down to about 350, okay? That meant that our probation caseloads went down. We started to target now the high-risk offenders in the community, you know, that small group out there that are what we call the wolves, okay? Um, and, and by doing that, we also were able to apply the research that shows that once you target high-risk, first you have to target the high-risk offenders and provide them the intensive treatment and surveillance that they need in order to reduce their rate of recidivism. The research also shows that if you treat low-risk youth like their high-risk youth, you actually increase the risk that they will reoffend. You make criminals out of them, okay? And so we looked at that data. We saw that was happening. And so as a result, our caseloads went from, you know, as high as 150 down to what they are now, which is 20 per officer. But those 20 kids, if they don't get the supervision that they're getting now, Okay, they will break into your house. They will steal your car. We see that recidivist rate has gone down dramatically. Uh, so that means our community is safer, not just the schools, but the community is safer because we're now targeting the high-risk youth and getting them the, the supervision they need 
so that they don't continue to commit delinquent acts.